So good morning or good evening, <laughs> no matter where you're from, we just have a new Yu-Gi-Oh card game world champion. Also, we have Master Rule champions and we're going to recap this event because I think there are definitely a few things that could be said here. Congratulations, first of all, Pauli Aronson, the new world championship TCG OCG. Just an amazing battle, amazing games. Um, it was really, really good to see. But there's a lot to break down here, so leave a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and let's start by discussing what actually happened in the event. I think in the beginning of the event, there was a lot of criticism to be said about the venue itself. It looked like the, the beginning of the day one and day two, um, which was the Swiss four Master Duel and the TCG, and of course the top cut, even up until top four, was played in this weird office space with like you know plastic chairs and like plastic calculators paper play mats it wasn't a really good look um but i think eventually the main event the finals were held in this big beautiful arena like we just saw so you know i suppose that's something i think a lot of people found it to be a little bit funny considering one of the better years financially for konami but let's go over um, we're probably going to focus a little bit more on the TCG side, but we are going to mention Master Duel as well. We have Lampy here reporting from the top eight, um, which was yesterday. And we see a lot of interesting picks. I think there are some picks here that were expected. For example, Rika. Shout out to Jess Robinson. Um, piloting Rika as well for this event because, you know, another deck that wasn't actually hit on the combined ban list. Two Rika. To Mathmec, to Dragon Link, which you know Mathmec also has a really big limitation on it, but Dragon Link, the the natural counter on the other side of that, with you know all bestials besides Serenir being at one, ending up taking the event and the world championship. Dragon Link, just shout out to Polly again. Then we have Vanquish Soul and Sword Soul, which we just saw in the finals. So two soul decks. I think Vanquish, Rika. Even Dragon Link, we're doing really, really well. Um, but overall, this should have been expected. I think considering what happens after this, we might see decks like Rika be hit eventually in both the OCG and the TCG just to make sure the deck is under wraps because you don't want it to get out of control. You have that very strong Link 1 that I personally think is in danger. And Sword Soul, another deck that really didn't get any engine hits throughout the years um out for like more than two years now i think and still available and dragon link even with all the limitations kind of crazy to see it taking it all the way home and another really important piece of information first time ever that the top eight consisted of only tcg players um no ocg players in the top eight of this tournament which is unheard of I think there's a lot to be said about the differences in the format. I think if you're talking about the limitations, it does kind of bring the format closer to our side of the pond. But still, seeing former world champions like Akira in 11th place not really doing well, decks like Labyrinth not really doing well, people in the OCG bringing in tier limits and kind of missing out on what could be impactful in this format and ending up staying out of the top eight for this tournament which is uh, kind of amazing this is again like Polly being the first champion from the u.s this was also a first um and you know some things that we we love to see still plague this format as well um shout out to steven steven santoli um and of course the united states north american world champion flipping up the tikaboo here um again you know those cards are still legal and we got to see some of that in the top eight match. This was the top eight match. This is all we got to see. But we didn't just see that. We also saw game two, which was concluded mainly with Dimension Shifter. Um, we talked before about maybe the future, maybe a potential ban list in the future. I don't personally see Shifter being hit on this ban list. Um, but some decks that benefit from Shifter could be impacted as a result of that but you know lingering floodgates floodgates like there can be only one goes and match skill drain still a large still a three still plaguing the format and you know it's something that konami will eventually need to address in the future but 
the man of the hour, the man of the day, Pauli Aronson bringing it all home, first time as a USA world champion, first time in the history of Yu-Gi-Oh that a player from the United States takes home the world championship. Huge shout outs, piloting Dragon Link, which again, probably one of the decks with more hits, but compensating for that with things like the Baby Dragon Metal Dragon package, and still, you know, being hit with the nib on the, the Heavenly Spheres, which completely opens up the game state from two players that basically pass turn to each other with like suboptimal and to eventually like ending on the Dragon Link, you know, premium end board and leaving his opponent, Juan Mateo, um, top decking, top decking Moya and Ashuna, but that's not enough against two negates at the end of the day. Really amazing to see that. Um, following that, like actually before that, we did see the Master Duel um, finals. The Master Duel finals, it was groups of three. It was actually um, Jesse Cotton's group versus Joshua Schmidt's group ending up in the finals. We saw decks like Tier Lament, Dragon Link, Exo Sister, Sprite even, and yeah, we even saw Runic. I think Josh played Runic Naturia in one of them. Really, really good matches to see. Really entertaining. I think the stream setup itself could have been a little bit better in terms of seeing the other games, but I think this format was a success for Konami overall. I think this was maybe with the viewership and the feedback from the crowd, we can see Master Duel finally turning into maybe an eSport. This was finally a chance to see Master Duel played as an eSport on a big event, on a big main stage. It was just beautiful to see. I'm personally, as a, as a gaming enthusiast, this is what you want to see from Yu-Gi-Oh! Because we have this beautiful product that is Master Duel, which I think is superior as a game, as a, as a uh, interactive product. This is one of the best ones ever to be made and it's a shame that it's left to be this you know challenger cup environment on discord instead of being like this on the big stage this is this is something to be to be taken note of from konami and of course shout out to quantal emre and josh for taking the master dual world championship the first one ever so congratulations to them taking it home with you know we follow Josh a lot. He's a big personality over on YouTube and Twitch, and we kind of saw that journey. So really beautiful to see the dedication and hard work paying off for Josh and his team. Beautiful to see. Congratulations on that. And also another nice moment that you can't really ignore. Billy Brake, you know, kind of like getting emotional about the first um, uh, American championship. Billy Brake playing this game since day one, multiple championships participating in world as well and finally seeing you know the game that he loves so much you know being won by an american world championship in Paul aronson really touching i, I love this moment absolutely i wish we had some more in-depth you know um scenarios like this but there was also another thing looming over this event which was the big announcement what would be konami's big announcement after the countdown and uh yeah, you know, we're, we're, we're kind of used to being disappointed, but it's a tournament in Japan, I guess, somewhere next year. I think overall the, the, the premise was that the celebrations of the 25th anniversary is continuing to next year as well, which is no big shock because I think it's a really good seller. You know, the rarities, the, the sets that are coming out, really easy to sell uh, and market. Basically, like, this is the, the announcement. A big tournament, the Legend of the Duelist tournament. Not a lot to be said about that, but, you know, we waited for the announcement. No, it's not an anime. Congratulations to Pauli Aronson, bringing a lot of joy and pride to American um, and TCG duelists in general. Extremely well-deserved. Love to see it. Um, and, yeah. Leave your comments down below. What did you think about this event? Leave a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. Congratulations to Polly. See you in the next one. Peace.